After being back on land for what seemed like a week, U-531 is ready for operational service once again. During our stay in Lorient, new equipment was installed on board. FUMB-10, a new radar warning receiver was installed on the boat's conning tower. This new equipment will cover frequency bands between 3 and 0.75 meters. In addition to this, new hydrophones were installed. Falcon Garrett. This will most certainly increase our underwater hunting capabilities, even though the futility of the tonnage war is being made painfully clear. Back here, and welcome to patrol number seven. This is our first episode of that patrol, and as you can see, we are currently departing Lorient. And here is one of our equipment upgrades aboard U-531 during this patrol. We have the dual two centimeter flat guns as opposed to the single two centimeter gun and uh, they have quite an impressive fire rate so this should help us fend off any pesky aircraft that may happen to get the drop on us obviously these are last resort weapons we do not really want to fight face an aircraft uh, on the surface because well they have a much better chance of hitting us than we have of hitting them even with this firepower one other thing we have is a new radar warning receiver, which is this little antenna we are currently looking at. This is FUMB-10 Borkrum, and I'm probably butchering that, but uh, here you have it. Uh, it is very similar to Metox, and really it was just a stopgap between Metox and uh, what we will be getting later. Probably after this patrol, I do suspect it will be available for uh, upgrading my boat with. But it's very similar to Metox, so it's not that great. And uh, as Allied Radar continues to develop, uh, it's still not going to pick up certain wavelengths and things like that. So uh, we'll be fighting it. It's going to be uh, interesting to see how this performs compared to Metox. I've actually never taken this before, I don't think. Or if I have, it's been a long time. But it's uh, interesting looking, I will say that. What else do we have? We have another pretty significant upgrade, and for that we'll go to the external view and take a look under our boat. We have new hydrophones, and as you can see, they are right there, just sticking out of the uh, the keel there. Oh, there we go. We have a new hydrophone. This is Vulcan Garrett, and once again, probably butchering that as well. But it should be a slight improvement from our previous hydrophones, and obviously is m mounted underneath the boat as opposed to on the deck like our previous hydrophone uh, was. So uh, that should be interesting to see as well. Now let's go ahead and hop onto the map and see our course. We're plotting our way out of here. This is probably not going to be the course I completely adopt. Our destination is grid DT all the way down here. But we are going to make for open water. We're just going to head towards BD and then we'll cut south. I do want to avoid lingering around the coast as much as possible due to the threat of allied aircraft. So we'll uh, head towards grid BD and cut south past our friend U488 and head to grid DT. Let's see our exact grid. DT 37 here. Now where is that? 37 right here. Let's plot a course to that. And we are operating pretty close to the ports here. So I think this is actually a pretty good spot. We should be able to catch quite a bit of shipping coming from Freetown. And even then, we can patrol here. This is a pretty nice choke point for this convoy route. I'm also looking. We may move further north here as well. Up towards the Canary Islands. The problem is air cover will be kind of thick here. But look at all these convoy routes where they all converge. That is... That is a uh, very sweet spot right there. We'll see how uh, the patrol progresses before we make that decision. One thing is the torpedo situation. So, torpedo situation is pretty bland. I really just took what the game gave me. We have mostly G7E torpedoes in the bow. Actually, all. Oh, we don't have any fats uh, for this patrol. In the aft tubes, we have G7Es. And then we have a T4 torpedo, a Falke which is a homing uh, torpedo, an acoustic homing torpedo. Oh, let's bring this back up. Uh, the T4 was the first homing torpedo fitted with a passive acoustic homing device. Few were used as it was quickly replaced by the T5. And speaking of the T5, we have one of those too. 
Uh, this is a G7E torpedo, so it is electric propulsion. The T4 is... Oh, it's electric as well. Speed is 20 knots. That's good to know. And this is another passive acoustic homing weapon. And it was designed to lock on to the loudest noise after a run of 400 meters. This often proved to be the U-boat itself, and the standard issued orders were to dive to 60 meters after launching from the bow tube, while a stern shot was to be followed by complete silence in the boat. Uh, the specifications, the target must be moving at a minimum of 10 knots. And I believe this for the T4, the target needs to be moving quicker than that, uh, moving at 12 knots. So that is good to know. The external reserves, we still have our external reserves because I couldn't really figure out a way to dispose of them. By this time in the war, U-boats were really not carrying the external reserves for a multitude of reasons, but well, the main ones were really, it's dangerous to reload these things on the surface uh, with allied air cover the way it is at the moment. You're just an absolute sitting duck, um, all stopped or moving really slow while you lug these torpedoes into the boat. And two, uh, with the extreme depths U-boats were being pushed to uh, later in the war, it was they worried that these would uh, compromise structural integrity, so they were the canisters were just ditched altogether. I think that that is the primary reason, but also the added benefit of you know not getting caught with your pants down on the surface is uh, good as well. So I went ahead and just reloaded all of these with G7As, and we aren't going to touch them. Uh, because, well, real U-boat skippers didn't, so we're not going to either. We're just going to pretend these do not exist. If you do know of a way to completely disregard these in the menu, I really couldn't figure out a way. Uh, please let me know. And I think that is all I have for this update. We're not getting bombed or anything. No air raid today. It's currently just past 16, yeah, 1607 at the moment, so... Uh, we should be able to transit the Bay of Biscay under darkness. We still have our raid arm. It's currently in its housing. I may turn that on as we transit the Bay of Biscay. We'll see. Uh, probably not, honestly. We want to just go standard speed out. Uh, we'll burn a bit of fuel doing that, but it's better than dying, <laughs> quite frankly. We have a little buoy out there. And uh, let's see. I believe our escort has a balloon attached to it, a barrage balloon. That is interesting. I can't believe I just now noticed that. That's pretty awesome. Well, we're going to follow our escort out because we want the added benefit of his anti-aircraft complement. And, um, yeah, I'll continue to follow him. I see no reason not to, especially at this point in the war. Um, the Allied aircraft are preying on U-boats returning and leaving from port because, oh, they're all, they all ha they're all in one area. Might as well concentrate your forces here. Uh, as the war progresses, also, U-tankers are becoming less and less frequent. We still have U-488, but I think its time operating here is running out. Other than that, that's... What else do we have out here in the North Atlantic? Nothing. Yeah, nada. We have something. There's. I know there's a resupply ship. Break was out here somewhere, I believe, but maybe it's not operational at the moment. In the Indian Ocean, and we still have Max Albrecht here on the... In Portugal, or Spain, excuse me. But other than that, yeah, nothing. So we'll just have to be a little more cautious with fuel and we won't be able to rearm so frequently, but uh, that is fine. Okay, well, I think that's all I really have to say for the time being. Uh, crew changes are minimal, nothing too exciting there. And yeah, that's all the equipment changes we have. So, it's currently November 22nd, 1943, and we are departing for our 7th patrol. I will cut now and get back to you folks when we are in the Bay of Biscay, and I'm going to try to make the dash through the Bay of Biscay on the surface this time, so we'll see how that goes. Anyway, I'll cut now and get back to you folks soon. Well, we've just reached the mouth of Lorient. It is right there behind us, and our escort has turned around, and he is heading back into base. So we are on our own. We're returning to our original course I have set up here, and we're just going to all ahead standard. Should be moving around 10, 11-ish knots, and we're going to make the dash. Well, hopefully this goes A-OK. -okay. Well, thanks for the very short escort, pal. It's better than nothing, I suppose. I thought those seagulls were airplanes for a second. 
thankfully we will have the cover of darkness to conceal us so we'll see how that goes but this will be interesting goodbye Lorient. hopefully it's not the last time we see you just a brief update it's currently november 23rd 1943 and we are just cruising through the bay of biscay Luckily, nothing has shot at us yet. No aircraft have been detected. As you can see, weather conditions have gotten pretty poor, but not awful. It's just overcast at the moment. Hopefully, it stays this way through the duration of our journey out of this area. But I just wanted to give you the, the morning news, I suppose. Uh, other than that, nothing else of import has happened. All right, it's uh, 8 o'clock in the morning on November 24th, and we have a contact way out here. One's blown a merchant vessel at 334 degrees. I vote we submerge the boat now. It's pretty close, just emerging out of that fog layer. Periscope down. Down we go. Oh, he's right on a, just an intercept course here. It's very possible it could be a friendly ship. However, I do doubt it. Looks like it is just heading into the Irish Sea here. Thankfully, we made it out of the Bay of Biscay for the most part without any encounters with Allied air cover. We are one of the lucky ones, it would seem. Let's change our heading as well. New course, 300. <laughs> Perfect. We are currently submerging down to nine meters. There we go. Just the conning tower is still sticking up now, and it is submerged. Perfect. Perfect. All right. We'll maintain periscope depth. Hopefully, we weren't spotted. We are pretty close to that merchant vessel. Let's slow down. All ahead, one third. I'm gonna set up for a stern torpedo shot. Looks like the enemy vessel is continuing to close on its current course. Let's take a listen. There it is. Interesting. It's moving pretty slow, it was that. That's from the sound. Doesn't look like it's zigzagging. Perfect. Let's go ahead and go to our tax scope, up scope. There she is. It's a medium cargo. Let's go ahead and plug that in here. Medium cargo ship. Generally, what, 5,000 tons, right? Large cargo, large merchants, medium cargo ship, 4,950 tons. Mark that in. Not bad. We're going to end up shooting to number five. It has a regular G7E in it. We don't want to shoot one of our electric torpedoes, or excuse me, our homing torpedoes at a slow moving merchant ship. We also have to remember if we're going to fire that, it has to meet the 12 knot minimum. And I do not think. This medium cargo is moving at a speed of 12 knots. Let's 315 it, however. I do want to find its speed here. Yeah, this thing's crawling. Probably 5 knots. Start the clock. Maybe even slower. What a madman. Alright, passing 3 seconds. Or 3 minutes. Just getting all of my measurements mixed up today, it would seem. Now I'm out of water. This is this is not good. <laughs> and 15 seconds, mark. Let's see, four knots. Wow, slow, slow, slow. Let's slow down. Kleine Fahrt voraus. Kleine Fahrt voraus. Yeah, amazing. Maybe it's sustained damage. Somewhere else have mechanical issues. Let's let's go with that because this is peculiar. 
All right, setting speed four knots. Range will plug in as one kilometer for the time being. It'll probably be closer than that. Uh, who knows? This merchant ship is heading northeast, it would seem. Let's try to establish a course on a heading of 045 degrees. Okay. Yeah, that's actually okay. I'm just double checking there. Don't want to screw this up. All right, continue to lock on target and we will track it. And let's reverse a bit. I do not want to get too far away from our uh, friend here. This is looking pretty good. All right, I'll head and let's move forward and get ready for our final preparations for the attack. Spring this up. Attack disc. Go on bow is currently 45. Okay. Set speed four knots. Let's get a range. One thousand two hundred and eighty meters. Set. Now we just lay in wait. Should all change fairly rapidly. Watching our gyro angle here. What's the draft of the medium merchant ship? 9.2 meters. Set our draft to 10 meters. Or the torpedo depth to 10. Magnetic pistol speed long. Perfect. Open tube 5. Hopefully this will put the ship under and we won't have to surface and use a deck gun. This merchant ship is pretty heavily armed. We have a fairly large, probably a four or five inch gun on the bow and also one on the stern. And it looks like a small caliber anti-aircraft guns up there. Not seeing any, yep, there's one up here I think as well on the uh, tower. Yeah, not something I'd like to really mess around with. Okay, one more ping. thousand two hundred and ninety meters okay makes sense gyro angle five as it closes in once it's at zero we will fire tube number five one all right tube five. Oh shit they saw my scope close all right tube five away not getting certain sound effects it's kind of annoying All right, tube five is away. We'll see if we get a hit here. Torpedo is running to the target. Should have an impact fairly soon. The merchant's going evasive. Take a look. We have something. It's looking good. It's like we still have a make a hit despite our scope being detected. Torpedo. There we go. Perfect. Good hit. go ship is coming to a halt it would seem oh look at that fire on board she is not looking good at all i'd rather not waste a second torpedo on this lone merchant ship so if it's possible we're gonna wait her out and hopefully she'll go down uh due to flooding uh it's just the using another torpedo is not ideal especially on a lone merchant well we'll see we're gonna lay in wait Let's turn so the merchant ship's not in our baffles, and I'm going to continue to track it, and we'll see if she goes down. Well, I've 
pretty much wasted the entire day waiting for this ship to uh, sink on its own due to flooding. However, it seems <laughs> the crew on board has stabilized the flooding and they're doing just fine. They're barely moving, however. They're moving at around one knot, it would seem. So I think I'm going to have to shoot another torpedo. It's either this or use the deck gun. And I'm not too keen on using the deck gun, especially since this has two fairly large cannons on her deck. I'd really, really rather not tangle with that and risk uh, my group, my crew getting killed. So let's go ahead and set this up. Speed one knot, angle on bow 60 degrees. We'll be shooting tube number five again. We'll set depth to 10.5 meters. Magnetic pistol, long run time, since that's not something we can change. Turn this on. And we'll just lay and wait. As you can see, she is just crawling, barely doing anything. Uh, so I'll just lower my scope and we'll back up a little bit and go forward and keep our position more or less and uh, launch this G7E torpedo at her. That'll leave us with only one. There we go. That'll leave us with only um, homing torpedoes in our stern tubes. That will be interesting. All right, let's start moving forward again. I can fire at an off angle. I just prefer not to. Look, it's a 43 degree gyro angle. I, I do want to wait for her to get into a better position. Six. All right, let's reverse some more. This should be okay. Let's adjust AOB. Speed one knot. Set. Let's get range on the sonar. Once again, this is really handy when we only have one merchant ship. There she is. 950 meters. Perfect. Yeah, and 50. All right, let's open tube number five. 19 degree gyro angle, that's not too shabby. Honestly, that is manageable. It's like it's heading straight for the target. All right, tube five. Los. Los. All right, torpedo is out the tube and running towards target. We got the sound effect that time for the torpedo launch. I don't know what happened that first time. I just had a random little game bug, I suppose. And torpedo is about to smack right into the target. Just a few seconds. And we can surface this boat and get some fresh air. <laughs> I'm sure my crew will be very thankful for that. Torpedo, torpedo impact right in the back. Lower scopes and they turned on her search. Oh, that's probably a star shell they just launched. See it pop out soon. I look, yep, there it is. Interesting. Well, we'll see if she goes down with that. I think two torpedoes, that has to be enough to bring a medium cargo ship under. I can't imagine uh, it needing more than that, but. Oh man, who even knows at this point? Let's use some time compression and watch her sink, hopefully. Okay, this ship is still on the surface somehow. It's still okay. So I've made the decision to surface the boat and we're gonna use the deck gun. I am not having this all ahead standard. I'm amazed this thing is still operating. We're gonna have to turn the boat around. All right, yeah, let's go. I just I can't believe it's it's still floating. That's amazing. This is one extremely extremely stubborn vessel. Let's go ahead and man the deck gun and the flag guns. Alle Mann auf Gefechtsstation. Geschütz besetzen. Los, schnell, schnell, schnell! Lock on target. We're going to turn on that heading. Geschütz wird nachgeladen. Neuer Kurs 165. Deckgeschütz Feuer bereit, Herr Kalon. Make sure everyone's where they need to be. You boys can get some rest now. I I am just amazed that it's still floating. We're gonna open fire from an absurd range. What are we picking this up on, radar? Our radar should be off. Oh, I guess it's on. Let's turn that off. 
Schiff gesichtet. Okay. Ship spotted. What's the range of the target? We're going to open fire from here. Jawohl, Herr Colonel. Ein Drittel fahrt voraus. Load high. Jawohl, Herr Colonel. Feuer frei. Wir eröffnen das Feuer. Los geht's, Männer! Jawohl, Herr Colonel. Neuer Kurs 176. I get another Jawohl, range update. 3,200 meters. Okay. Fire. Let's see if that's a hit. There's no way it's going to need much. Oh, that was a hit. <laughs> Beautiful. Increase range. Let's wait for the gun to slightly stabilize. And they spotted us. Or that that's a star shell they're shooting. There's no way they know we're here. Where we are. Can't tell if that was another hit. Reload, reload. Ah, and these waves. Man, these waves. Fire. Another hit. Can only tell by the flashes that we've got a hit here. I can't. I just am amazed that this medium cargo took two torpedoes. It was just so stubborn. I wasted my day, my friend. That's okay. That's why I was so like determined just to wait it out and let the ship sink, but it just seems like it was not going to. There we go. Starting to get some secondaries. That's what I want to hear. Continue to fire. This is why the deck gun is still okay, even at this point in the war. It's just dangerous. More secondaries going off. Uh, I believe that went over. Their searchlights are honestly making it fairly easy to do this. Kind of illuminating the mass and everything. Obviously, there's a big fire on her deck as well. This really makes me uh, want to get the mod where fire damage actually does something to the enemy ships. In the base game, it does nothing, unfortunately. Yeah, got another Calloway. range reading. Still overshooting. Oh, that looked like a waterline hit to me. At least, yeah, I can't tell. And I, I can't really aim for specific compartments of the enemy ship, so I'm just taking what I can get at this point. Probably use the deck gun once or twice this patrol. Oh, I'm not too worried about conserving its ammunition. We're getting hit after hit, though. Oh, boy. Is that coming my way? Guess they finally picked up on the flashes, huh? Oh, yeah. That just screamed over my head. Another hit. Looks like only one of her guns is firing at me. Another hit. She's going down. Oh my goodness. All right. Get the bridge crew on and pull our course. Get the hell out of here. Man. That was... <laughs> oh. All right. She's going down. Goodbye. They put up one hell of a fight. Some lifeboats in the water. And she's done for. Okay, just a brief update on what is actually going on. It's currently December 3rd, 1943, and we are sailing on nice, calm seas. We're currently in the mid-Atlantic here, and we are heading south towards our objective, which is DT-37. We'll be passing the Azores fairly soon, so I am on my toes because of the Allied air cover in the area. I do suspect they have an air base here, so I do need to be on the lookout for that, and will be cautious, but... After we sunk that medium cargo, we have not detected anything during this whole leg here, which is 
okay i do i'm kind of surprised we did not pick up any convoys in this area but we'll see as we get down to dt i do suspect we will encounter something uh, a little juicy but who the heck knows the crew's okay everything's hunky dory on board and i'll keep you all updated as we continue our journey down to dt 37. Aircraft spotted, medium range, two of them. Oh shit, all ahead flank. And the flat guns. Fire at will. Oh my god. Fire at will. Oh, Alright, we got men killed. All ahead flank. Come on, keep it up. Get on the flat gun. Fire, fire. Okay, I need good men on the gun. These guys are all... They're, I don't know why they're not shooting. I also need a repair team on immediately. You. Get on. We have dead... The boat is pretty much dead in the water. We have no propulsion. Okay, we're continuing to pump all the water out. We have quite a bit of flooding. Let's get all these three these men. Oh man, what a disaster. Okay. Let's see Coral, Johannes, Udo, Hans, and Wolfram. All KIA. It's just so eerily quiet right now. All right, we got to slow down. Fort diesel engine destroyed. I'll stop. I'll stop. We have stress on our diesel engines. Oh my gosh, we're going to be dead in the water for a while. Let's get you up there. And let's get more men in these various compartments. We're going to have to start pumping water out of our barracks soon. I did relaunch the game. I was having some sound issues, so that's why I did do that. Okay, a lot of this, the situation is under control. Electric engines repaired. Attack periscope destroyed. Observation scope not working. Radar antenna destroyed on the con. Oh boy, we have so much damage. Main pump is damaged and so is our fuel. Uh, hydrophones not working. Radar, sonar, batteries all not working. Let's see what's damaged in the barrack. Minor damage there. Forward batteries are damaged. Uh, all four torpedo tubes are damaged. Hydrophones receivers are damaged. Starboard diesel engine is damaged. It's going to take three hours to repair that. Fort diesel engine is destroyed. Everything in our electric engine room is damaged. It's going to take two to three hours to repair all that. Hopefully they don't come back for round two. We have heavy flooding. Okay, let's start pumping the water out of the forward barracks. Get men in the E-machine in. Okay, the boat is just dead stop in the water. It's amazing how quiet it is here. Oh, man. I, that, whenever I automatically click man the guns, it put a whole bunch of tired men on the guns and they weren't shooting. Extremely infuriating. Alright, 37 seconds before the water is out here. Let's get on the move. I'll head one third. We need to plot a course back to L'Oreal. Oh, we're not even moving. Everything's so screwed up here. We're just drifting. Let's take a look at our boat. Yeah, the bomb blast got extremely close to us. I'm pretty sure we were actually hit with a small bomb or something, and uh, the damage disappeared when I reloaded. It tends to do that, which is unfortunate. Okay, water is being pumped out. Let's get the water out of here. It'll take one minute. Use some time compression. Let's make sure those British planes are not returning back. Okay, we are getting some speed. Following our course, we're making three knots. Let's get repairs done on our starboard diesel engine first. It's going to take hours to repair all this. Let's get a good bridge crew on as well. Let's just get men on the bridge. I don't care who. There we go. That'll suffice. Holy cow. 
Okay. Everything's under control. We have to head home, though. Fuel, we've lost so much fuel. We're down to around 50% fuel. This is... Huh. This is not good. Let's make our way back to L'Oreal. We're going to repair diesels first, and I'll just work my way up from most important to least important. Propulsion is obviously uh, our primary goal here. Everything else is secondary. The boat is just crawling here. Let's try to get some more speed. Yeah, I'm not... Wow. Okay, well, I'll continue trying to repair all this damage and I'll get back to you all very shortly. All right, we have finished repairs on the starboard diesel engine. We're finally making relatively good speed, moving eight knots at one third. We're going to begin repairs on the control room to fix the main pump and the fuel tank here. And then we'll move over to the electric engine and then batteries and such. All of our sensors are still disabled, our radio, radar, and all that. So, uh, I don't know. It's uh, This is a tough one here. But we'll slowly make our way through the boat and continue repairs. But at least we have propulsion now. That's what really matters. So I'm going to continue on the move. We're going to have to stay surface. We still have this water that I can't get out of the boat. So submerging is not an option at the moment. Unless we want to sink to our deaths. This is <laughs> this has been a very uh, interesting experience, I suppose. But I thankfully, we are still alive. The boat is still intact. And we have a chance of making it home to Lorient. I have our watch crew here. And we're ready to man the flat guns if need be. Because we're going to have to slug it out on the surface if another pair of aircraft come. Uh, I'm sure those planes that hit us think they got scored a direct hit and sunk us. So, who knows? Maybe they won't be returning. But time will tell. We're just making a beeline for Lorient. Main pump is now intact. So, repairs are going okay are going rather well it's almost midnight now we're gonna start moving men to bed let's get some sleep i'm gonna keep my repair team repairing certain things we're repairing the stern torpedo room now we'll just move forward i do want to get some of the stuff on the conning tower uh actually every stuff on the conning tower is just destroyed it's either functional or just destroyed we still have our observation scope which is good our radar antennas blown to bits which is un very unfortunate but Okay, well, <laughs> uh, we'll continue repairing the boat. We are heading home at a speed of 12 knots. So, uh, hopefully we don't get attacked again. If so, that may be the end for U-531. On December 4th at 8 o'clock in the afternoon, all repairs have been complete aboard U-531. Everything we can repair. Let's go ahead and bring the boat down. We'll drop down to 40 meters and a test dive. Dive the boat. Gotta make sure everything's okay as we go into a very shallow dive. I do not want to exceed 40 meters. That would be absolute. <laughs> I do not want to test our pressure hole at this point. Well, we lost a lot of fuel too. Yeah, this boat has certainly seen better days. All right, down we go. Down to 40 meters, Chief. Boat's holding up. Thankfully, we have both of our electric motors. They make pretty good speed underwater still. All right, maintaining 40 meters. Perfect. Not dropping. Okay, we're golden. We're going to surface the boat. Good job, repair team. You all deserve medals. Holy cow. All right, boat is coming back up. We're going to bury our dead. Unfortunately, our, our diesel engine is definitely having some issues keeping up with all this. But regardless, uh, Carl Ernst, we're going to bury him. Oh, and I buried all of them at once. I meant to bury them one at a time, but all of our dead have been buried at sea, and we are making a beeline for L'Oreal, and hopefully we will be there soon. Let's get a... 
range estimate time. Time to course in. 214 hours, so it's still quite the journey. And with all this damage, I'm not too excited about it, but hopefully we can make it. I'll keep you all updated. Quick update on our current location. We're entering the Bay of Biscay now. The weather conditions are pretty pitiful up here. So that is something that is at least in our favor. Hopefully this continues up our entire journey to the Gulf of, or the Bay of Biscay and to Lorient. We got a few contacts here and there that were close, but honestly, my one objective is to make it home. I want to get home because if we like get attacked by a destroyer and have to dive deep, we're going to crack like an egg. So uh, really just trying to actually conduct a patrol is futile. Our best bet is to head home for repairs and head out in the next one. We did take a bomb to the aft section of our boat, so uh, we are really not capable of fighting. But we are almost home. We're getting there 56 hours away. It is well within sight. It's currently December 9th, 1943, and hopefully the next time I am speaking to you, we will be at Lorient. I'll keep you all updated. And here we are. We have made it back home to Lorient. Thankfully, the poor weather continued, so we were able to limp back home concealed and uh, safe from enemy aircraft. Wow. What, <laughs> what a patrol. One episode, one patrol here. I have no idea how long this is, but my God. That was absolutely nuts. It's very unfortunate we lost those crewmen, but I am thankful we were able to bring the boat home back in one piece relatively. I am very curious to see what our hull integrity will be. Let's get a little bit closer to the port so we can end this uh, nightmare of a patrol. First, we started off with that seemingly invincible medium cargo, and then we were just bombed to smithereens. Absolutely insane. And here we are in Lorient, as dreary as ever. Let's go ahead and exit the patrol. All right, we ended the mission with that 5,160 tons of shipping sunk. We sunk one ship. We started with 55 healthy crew, and we ended up with 50. We lost five crewmen. Stock at Lorient. Hull integrity was 49.40%. That's a bit higher than I was expecting, to be honest, but still not very good at all. Uh, I do think returning home was the right decision in this case, especially since our attack scope was destroyed, our radar was destroyed, and obviously one of our diesel engines was destroyed, so we would not be able to really chase down a convoy. Uh, it's unfortunate that the patrol had to end like this, but I think it was a good decision. And we are officially in February 1944. Let's go here. Uh, we probably have upgrades that I'll, I'll go through later. Maybe new radar warning. Yep, Naxos. Um, so a new radar warning receiver. Hopefully this will remedy some of the aircraft troubles we've been going through. We only have 300 renown, so I'll probably spend it on that, honestly. I doubt there's anything else in here. The snorkel, we can get the snorkel. We'll see about the snorkel. I do have plans for that later on. But anyway, wow, wow, wow. What a, what a patrol, what a depressing patrol, frankly. Oh yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. It was a very short seventh patrol, but hopefully we'll have a better eighth one. Anyway, thank you all for watching as always. This is Wolfpack345 signing off, and I'll see you all on the next one.